Decision Tree for Statistics. All right, it's difficult to tell sometimes which type of statistical analysis you're going to run. And I'm going to go over this real quick video to show you how I do it. All right, so which test should you use? It depends on basically two things. First is your types of variables that you're using. Right, nominal, ordinal, continuous. There is a fourth called interval. Do not use those. Quick review on which is which. Let's take a subject. Let's say it's a fish. Hello, fishy. So a nominal variable about the fish would be the type of fish. Oh, it's a shark fish. Oh, it's a tuna fish or a starfish, right? Where the nominal variable puts them in specific groups or categories. Uh, the continuous variable would be how much the fish weighed or if you measured them with a tape measure, how long was he? An ordinal variable, if you made your own little table of numbers that represent the size of the fish. So one would be a little tiny fish like Nemo. Two would be a bigger fish like an eel or something. All the way up to 10, 10 would be a whale shark, right? The biggest fish in the ocean. So you see that order there? One is the smallest, 10 is the largest. And as the numbers increase, so does the size. That's ordinal, also called rank, rank order, something like that. But that's the types of variables that you're going to use in your statistical analyses. And the second thing you need to know is what are your questions, right? What are you asking? What are you looking for? So the questions basically break down into two parts. Are you looking for differences between groups? What that really means is, is there a significant difference in the DV of whatever you're measuring in everybody between group means? That's the difference part. Okay. The second part of that is, are you looking for a relationship between variables? In other words, when one value of a variable changes, will it influence a change in another variable? It's the cause and effect type of idea, right? Does one variable change cause another variable change? But we got to be careful we can't say cause and effect. But that's, that's the second half. First half is you're looking for significant differences. The second when you're looking for significant relationships. So the relationship variables can be literally anything. They could be nominal. We don't like nominal. We prefer that they are continuous or scale or ratio, right? Just regular numbers that have fractions in them and zero means zero. We prefer them that way, but we can also use ordinal variables and even nominal variables in relationship type things. But let's keep moving on. I have a, a table of data here, and I want to see if you can decide which ones are nominal, ordinal, or continuous. If you get good at, at identifying what type of variable is, that's, that's half the decision tree right there. So just make sure you're good at def defining what type of variable you're dealing with. So age, that's obvious, that's continuous, right? You can be 43 and a half years old. So, and it's just a larger number set. That's the, usually the way you tell if it's a continuous variable. If you got large numbers in there, then it's, then it's continuous. All right, gender. Gender is nominal, right? Categorical. It puts people in one group or the other. It's a grouping variable. Gender, nominal, boom. Ethnicity, same thing. It's nominal. It puts people in one and only one group, right? One, white, two, African-American, three, Hispanic, four, Asian-American, et cetera, et cetera where a number means a group. It doesn't mean a number. All right, type of therapy, same thing. This is nominal, right? One could be CBT, two could be biofeedback, three, et cetera, et cetera. Again, a number isn't a number. A number is actually a name of a category, but for SPSS purposes, we put numbers to represent specific values. That makes it a nominal variable, categorical variable. Level of education, that is ordinal, right? A one means low education, and I see a seven. A seven means high education. So the higher the number, 
the higher the rank or the order of whatever you you're doing. So there's several ways to think about that. The main the main type of ordinal variable that you will probably use will be the Likert scale, right? One, I hate it. Five, I love it. Something like that, where as the number increases, so does the strength of the characteristic. Okay, so that's ordinal. And social economic status, that too can be considered ordinal, right? One is low income, and what do we see? A six, six is high income. So the larger the number, the more the income. Daily calories, those numbers are huge. So right off the bat, you should know that's continuous. Weekly exercise, same thing. These numbers are huge. These are continuous variables, and so is weight. So let's take a quick glance, see if I got them right. Bam. Yes. Continuous is age, daily calories, weekly exercise and weight, nominal or gender, ethnicity type of therapy, and level of education, social economic status are um, ordinal. Now, little sidebar here. Ordinal variables... They're kind of they're kind of useful. You can use them as as nominal variables if you want, and sometimes you can use them as continuous variables if you want. So just remember, these these are very very multi talented ordinals. And I think that's why they got created in the first place. So moving on. All right, back to your questions. If you're looking for a difference between a group, and by difference I mean significant, significant means that the difference between the two means is large enough to be significant. And remember, it's the difference of the means of some dv, whatever you're measuring. You're, it's either going to be a t-test or an ANOVA. So there's, there's three kinds of t-tests. The first one is a one-way t-test, and that is if you're comparing a sample mean to a population mean, or a stated norm, or a stated claim, something like that. So a good example would be um, the SAT company says that the average SAT score for mathematics was 500. Boom. But Mrs. Johnson, she's a math teacher, she had all of her 11th graders take the SAT, and she took their average math test scores, and her average was 550. So she's claiming that her test sample is significantly higher than the stated mean of 500. That would be a one-way t-test. The sample is Mrs. Johnson's math class, and the population is the SAT people came out and said that it was 500. So that's a one-way t-test, also called a one-sample t-test. The independent t-test, that is your most used. That means if you have two separate groups, and you want to compare a DV between two separate groups. Example, Mrs. Johnson wants to see if the boys scored higher than the girls or lower than the girls on the tests. Okay, so the DV would be the test scores, and the independent variable would be gender, right? Male versus female. This is also called a two-way or a two-sample t-test. Last but not least is called the paired t-test. And with this one, there's only one group. That's how you tell it's a paired t-test. Everybody gets the first test. That's what we call a pretest. And then something happens. You get you get some training or some education or a shot or some therapy. And then they give you the same test again after whatever they did. And that's the post-test. That is a paired t-test. There's only one group. So the example would be Mrs. Johnson gave a, 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 a final exam at the, on the first day of school and everybody failed. But then, four months later, at the end of the semester, she gave everybody the exact same final exam, and everybody passed. So that would show improvement. So that means whatever she did between the first test and the second test showed improvement in whatever you were measuring. And in this case, the DV would be test scores again. So, good way to remember the T-test. The T, the first T stands for two. Two. So with a one-way T-test, you're comparing... One mean, the sample mean versus the population mean, independent sample, in, independent t-test. You're sep you're comparing two separate means, two independent means, and the paired t-test is you're comparing two separate measurements. Okay, that's how you remember a t-test. The ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. Has many 
tails, you're going to use the ANOVA if there's more than two groups. Right? Three or more groups, you're supposed to use the ANOVA. And the main one is the one-way between group test. A good example is that of, of that is um, who can do the most push-ups in an hour. That's the DV number of push-ups in an hour. And that between the sailors, the marines, the soldiers, the coast guards, the airmen, etc., etc. So you have one IV called military branch with the five levels, right? Navy, army, etc., etc. And the DV is the number of push-ups. That's a one-way between group. There's also called a one-way within group. It's like a paired T-test, but instead of two measurements that are the same, this has more than two measurements that are the same. So this also goes by the name of repeated measures. That's the, that's the term I prefer. Repeated measures. It's, it's defined, right? It's a measure that's repeated. But the books like to call them one way within groups. A good example of that is you wanted to see if uh, a new therapy would decrease depression in people with severe depression. So you give them a, a baseline test for depression. That's your pretest. You go ahead and do your therapy for a couple of weeks. Then you give them the same depression test after the therapy. Hopefully it went down. And then six months later, you give them another depression test to see if it lasted, your therapy lasted for a long time. That's a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. One-way within group repeated measures ANOVA. And the last one is, is it if it has both of them, if it has a between group and a within group design in the study. So an example, let's go back to our depression scores, right? We give them a pretest. We give them the therapy, we give them a post-test, six months later we give them a follow-up. But we also want to see if there was a difference between the males and the females. So that's the between group would be the gender, and the within group would be the three repeated measures. And then the last one in reality is, if you got more than one DV, that would be a MANOVA. So back to our push-ups and, and the military guys. If we wanted to see if there was a significant difference in push-ups and sit-ups, so you got two DVs, you got push-ups and sit-ups. That would make it a manova. So let's let's keep going. I almost forgot. If you're going to control for any variable, such as age or weight or IQ scores, anything like that, with an ANOVA, that makes it an ANCOVA. Whatever variable you're controlling for is called a covariate, and it has to be a continuous variable. If it's, a, if it's a categorical variable or a nominal variable, it simply becomes another IV in ANOVA. Makes it a factorial ANOVA. But again, if you're going to control for a continuous variable and an ANOVA, that makes it an ANCOVA or a MANCOVA. So if you hear the word difference come out of your mouth, it's either going to be a T-test or the ANOVA. Got it? If you're looking for differences between groups, T-test or ANOVA. Now, if you're looking for a relationship, right, does one variable influence another variable, right, cause and effect, it's either going to be a correlation or a regression. So a correlation measures the strength and direction between two continuous variables. Example, the temperature of the day goes up, like during the summer, does it increase ice cream sales? Right? So your, your first variable is number or um, temperature of the day. Your second variable is ice cream sales. Right? Does one cause the other? That's a, and, and if they're continuous variables, you're going to use the Pearsons. If they're not continuous variables, if they're like uh, from a Likert scale, or any, if the data is ordinal, you're supposed to use the Spearman's. Okay? Spearman's correlation if the data is ordinal. And there are lots of other correlations like the point by serial, um, the Kendall's, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the, you're, most of the time you're going to be using a Pearson's. Occasionally you'll be using a Spearman's. Those other ones I strongly recommend you do not use. Let's talk about regression. Regression is the line of the best fit in your scatter plot model, right? So it's the least squares regression line. 
and the first one we talk about is a simple regression. A simple regression is basically a correlation. It's the same thing. There's only one IV and one DV, but they square the R, and that becomes your R squared, which is your effect size. So a simple regression, some people call it a simple linear regression or just a linear regression, which they shouldn't, but that is one IV, one DV. Now, if there's more than one IV, it's called a multiple regression, and most of us do have more than one IVs. So multiple regression. The IVs in this baby is called the predictors, and the DV is called the outcome or the criterion. But again, you got you got multiple IVs and just one DV. Now, if your DV is a dichotomous categorical variable, then you could do a logistic regression. So I'll say that again. Logistic regression where your where your DV, your outcome, is is a dichotomous categorical variable, right? Yes or no, pass or fail, live or die, okay? Odd or even. So there's only two possible outcomes, and you're going to predict it with a bunch of IVs. That is a logistic regression model. And i got to show you a weird one. I never know where to put this guy because it's a, it's, it's a little, it's not an ANOVA, it's not a correlation at all, but it is has to do with a relationship but we call them associations, okay? So an association is a relationship, but just for this this test, we're gonna we're gonna call them association, and it's between two and only two nominal variables. In other words, do men tend to be Republicans? Feel that? So gender is the first variable, men and women, and political party is the second variable. Republicans, Democrats, others, okay? So two categorical variables, an association. That's what you're looking for. And you're going to use the lovely chi-squared test. And there's two types of chi-squared test. The first one is a goodness of fit test. and But the main one that you're going to be using is the test of independence. So the test of independence, the chi-squared test of independence, that'll be the main one you're looking for. That would... That would answer that question, do men tend to be Republicans? Moving along, some general information. If the, if your data violates too many of the assumptions, you should probably use the non-parametric version of the test. That's not always true, but it has been my practice, and I've done literally thousands of these. It rarely matters which way you want to go with a parametric or non-parametric version when it comes to the results. So, example, if you had a significant difference in your ANOVA, but the data violated the homogeneity variance and normality, you would switch to the non-parametric version of the ANOVA, probably of the Kruskal-Wallace test. And if you 99,000 times out of, you know, 100,000 times, you're going to get a significant difference in the Kruskal-Wallace test as well. Okay, so, but the main thing is a non-parametric test is not considered as powerful as a parametric test. You should use a parametric test if possible first. If not, switch to the non-parametric. Part two, if the data is ordinal, if you're using ordinal data, then you should probably use the non-parametric version of that test. Number one thing that that is for, from is for the Spearman's correlation. So if you're comparing two ordinal variables, you should probably use the Spearman's correlation. All right, I'm losing my voice. So what I just went over here will probably represent about 99% of everything that you will do in your statistical world. Everything, 99%. There are a few others that I didn't get go over, but they're so far and in between. I, you know, I'm not even going to touch on them. And like always, practice makes perfect. Practice these. Practice, practice, practice. So the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Again, it all boils down to two things. What do your variables look like? What types are they? And what your questions are. Are you looking for a difference or a relationship or an association? So that's it. MGZ out.